I'll come back and you are still on to Cosmopolitan Market, which is, of course, coming to you on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, your dependable information network. And at the beginning of the program, I did say that we have seen quite a lot happen in the economic space in Nigeria and globally, uh, from oil prices rising to uh, the depleting foreign reserves in Nigeria. And, of course, the CBN digital currency. Indeed, a lot has happened um, in recent times. And I have my guest here with me who shall be joining me to X-ray some of those burning economic issues. He is Dr. Emmanuel Shaibu Idenyi. He is a financial analyst. Thank you, Doctor, for coming on the program. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, and good morning, viewers. It's a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you very much. Okay, let's begin, Doctor, with the price of oil. We have seen the price of oil go past the $70 a mark that it had um, stayed around for a long time. And this is despite the resurgence of the Delta variant of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And, of course, we saw the OPEC Plus decision over the weekend. What do you make of all of this? And what do you think is pushing the growth in price of oil? Thank you very much. Um, we need to understand that um, at the beginning of the COVID, a lot of uncertainties, people knew virtually next to nothing on coping mechanisms. And we have had this pandemic in the last 12 months plus. No, we are beginning to see how to cope with the situation because um, it almost shut down the whole economy of the world. But we cannot shut down the economy of the world. We must Definitely find not. a way to, you know, cope, survive, and thrive. And um, uh, countries who thought they could do it alone discovered that they need the support of other countries. So what caused the increase in price before we will begin to enjoy that a considerable growth we are talking about is people are beginning to see that we can actually live with this pandemic. We can actually find a way to keep our lives running because um, so there were some doomsayers, things will not go, return to normal. But of course, it was during the pandemic, we now had the, the new normal, the new normal. Everybody has to adjust. Even when there was second wave, third wave, of course, you knew what happened when um, there was even um, a suspicion about even the vaccine. People said, no, it's going to cause this, it's going to yeah, do the that. the conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories from people who don't even know anything about science. But now that it has come, people have taken the vaccine, the first shot, the second shot. It's now telling everybody that, okay, if this has to stay with us for the next three, four, five years, <laughs> do we shut down our life? Mm. Definitely not. So that has made people to think innovatively. And gradually we are beginning to see they just like you having um, a tick on your body and the tick is not going away. You find a way to live with it and find ways to now interact with other people who help to drive the growth of the economy of the world. Because for, before now, people thought that our economy is doing well, it can stand alone, but it's, it, everybody has his own contribution it brings to the table. And that's why you see the growth. Yes, we may not be producing and, ref and we may not be refining as a country, but it gives our brand more favorable pricing out there for us to sell and of course we are still buying refined products into nigeria so that is one of the and when opec had that their meeting at first it was deadlock mm, it was it was deadlocked but then again they went back to the drawing board and opec is made up of every country that but um what we should learn from this is regardless of our situation we are humans and we are homo sapiens mm. and we can think innovatively to better our situation that's for me what i see and if this trajectory continues it therefore means that things are going to see we're going to see a better light that yes there is pandemic but we can live with it we can draw up you know lessons on how to you know meander the interstices and tell ourselves we may chart a part of life along this line regardless or whether there is a pandemic or not. Mm. Okay, we have heard from major investment banks like the Morgan Chase Bank, Citibank yeah. and the likes. And one thing they have all said is that they expect for oil prices to hit as high as $80 a barrel by the end of the year. Yeah. Do you share in the same sentiment? Fantastic. For them to... To, you know, th those organizations that don't just make careless statements, they make statements based on fact, based on research, based on um, um, empirical postulation, as it were. It may not hit 80, it may get to 78, 79, mm -hmm. or it may even go as high as 81, mm -hmm. because... Um, as as fantastic as your plan is now, you don't know the realities that we confront it when it gets to the drawing board. So it's a good postulation because 
they will go back to the drawing board and begin to check which indicators, what are the assumptions that will make us hit this target. And that's why at times, even you project something, it happens to be more than that because there is a factor that you don't know about that can aff affect the growth or otherwise when it is happening. Uncertainties. Like uncertainties, which like the forces of demand and supply, for instance. And that that is also to help everybody that's involved to also work. To, because if the oil prices go up, it's good for everybody. It's good for everybody. Well, you know, Nigerians will then have to pay more or have to pay more for petrol if oil prices continue to rise. And don't you think this is a time for us to be looking at other um, alternative sources of energy at this point? Because, you know, like they say, subsidy. When price of um, petrol is high, we find ourselves paying even more for subsidy. Should we, look, should we be looking at other energy sources at this time? Or is this not the, the time for that yet? You know, the problem with our climate is we are still a developing economy. So we are a bit um, hesitant to want to venture into an, uh, a, a, an environment where we know little or nothing and the risk associated. Because mm -hmm. we have a lot of energy that can be stored in terms of sun. We have the wind. You understand what I'm saying? And these are viable sources. But how much of investment have we been able to put in that we want to reap? at this time when standard of living for an ordinary man is mm -hmm. on the increase and um government is still trying to give handouts to help people the economy is not working as it has been projected mm -hmm. so if you now want to go and invest in energy for instance in terms of having having a, 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 a electric cars you know cars that are not uh, on fossil fuel and all those things are we willing to do that investment and be able to communicate it to the person that will benefit from the the brunt when the chips are down that's usually our problem not because we are not innovative but we are slow and we're not quick to adapt and because we are a people that wants you know <laughs> fabricate things wants to happen now no 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 so that mentality is also there so we should look at investing in all those all those other sources of energy electric cars are mm. already we've launched one in nigeria but it will take another how many years mm -hmm. before we start to jump and and the truth is these things are not rocket science mm. they are empirical they are stages they are processes and it works better in a nation where the economy is robust is developed we are still developing just like you cannot build something on nothing there must be a solid foundation on which it will thrive even beyond any administration as it were and that is where we are at i can tell you for free some homes in the last 10 15 years don't have any business with with a public power supply mm -hmm. they don't have business with public water supply they don't have any business with all that and it has made me to t say that every nigerian is a nigerian on his own because you try to provide for everything for yourself provide your power, your power. provide your road you and, provide and and you but this thing is still in the same global and nigeria economy that is not moving at the way it is value of naira is crashing and it's making U.S. dollar, which is the currency of trade in the world, to appreciate, is not because U.S. is doing. It's because our currency has not been able to compete favorably. Mm. We are still an import-dependent economy, mm. and to a large extent, we must pay for some things to come. If we had backtracked and say, in the last ten years, in the last fifteen years, we decided to invest in critical sectors, regardless, and communicate same, because communication is key. The ordinary man on the road does not care what your NPC is saying. Mm. What he wants to know is, I bought this in 10 naira and I'm buying it 5 naira now. There is a growth. But I bought it 10 naira and I'm buying it 15 naira now. He can't understand. Mm. And you tell him the economy is working, he, he, he finds it difficult to reconcile as it were. And that's where we are at right now, mm. that um, the policies of government may be well thought out, but they are not properly communicated. And once you don't communicate, in, uh, no understanding will not take place mm -hmm. and if understanding does not take place you begin to get the backlash against government even though some of the policies have have impeded growth and they have to backtrack foreign direct investment doesn't come because our environment ease of doing business is just uh, 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 on the lips of our mouth the real business is not being done mm -hmm. taxes are flying left right and center cost of energy insecurity you know banditry all these things affect the cost of doing business and the man on the street we bear the bronze because he is the final consumer and i may want to stay in business so i must find a way to even break even not even to talk of get making profit in some instances 
Mm, doctor, okay, given this trend that we have seen, especially with regards to oil, what do we expect, especially um, looking at the Naira stability? I know you have made mention of how the Naira, of course, has fallen, especially uh, with in comparison with other foreign exchange. But what do we expect now in the coming, say, months uh, with regards to the Naira stability? Thank you very much. First of all, we know that the 2021 budget was predicated on a particular amount mm -hmm. to dollar. The central bank itself had to drop that from their website. Yeah, to 410. Naira. 410. Even at 410, it's not realistic. The, 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 the facts are very simple. We have a budget that has already a 5 trillion deficit. I've been issue. So we have a problem in our hands. Now, I've always said that our problem is not we don't have we, our problem is not borrowing our problem is revenue statistics that was released some weeks ago we are spending 70 percent of our revenue to service our debts that is we are spending 70 naira in every 100 naira to service our debt then what happens to the remaining is it enough to run the economy so we have to run and go and borrow Borrow is, borrowing is not a problem what are you borrowing for is it to for is it what you're going to is it, it, can it pay itself when it's being utilized, what is the moratorium and all those now? As it is, last week dollar was five hundred and five. It was five hundred and five naira to a dollar. Even oh, today. Even today. Mm. Now, it's not because dollar has a problem. It is because naira has a problem. Mm. There are still some institutions in Nigeria that they will request you to pay them in U.S. dollars. Why is that so? When we have regulators that can need this thing in the bus schools organizations they will say pay me in dollar because our naira has become so reduced in value mm. against the primary currency of the world so if you are earning a million naira today now once you convert it to dollar you just tell yourself this thing is as useless as zero mm. after decimal point <laughs> that is the point so the truth for me is we must begin to look at other sources of earning money i said in this studio about a month ago that with what this government has done with the rice revolution we can begin to think of other cash crops mm. we import corn we still import granite we still import soya beans from niger and chad and we have giant of africa mm. to wear where we have lands that can cultivate those things but because of insecurity foreign people are called foreign fulani people coming to outrun your farm so people don't go to farm anymore they they just sack people and this a manufacturing organization we want to still deliver so they had to find alternative sources to get this thing and produce and we had the ground pyramid in the north mm -hmm. in, Ka in kano mm -hmm. we had um, um other thing tomatoes fruits veggies imagine between plateau state ninjas and uh, nasawa state and benue state that through those three states, there is no juice manufacturing factory on that belt mm -hmm. and there is a waste of fruits and veggies on a daily basis mm -hmm. on that axis this thing can be converted into productive use and we begin to show up you know income from that level our roads are dilapidated the government has spent a lot but if you are traveling on the road bandits kidnappers the money you have suffered to get you have to go and use to pay ransom to get your life back because no amount of money is worth anybody's life as it were now these are the critical challenges facing us we imported we exported yam sometimes ago they say god yeah, it was bad we didn't hear anything about the yam again and we had a lot of we have a lot of yam between Nasara and Benue states. Rice in the north, beans in the north. You need to see the truck loads of trailers that leave the north through Plateau to Abuja to down south, southwest, southeast on a daily basis. And you these things we don't add value to them. And once you add value to them, you make more money. It's when you have done it to a level that you can export. And it's when you export, you earn foreign exchange. And once you earn foreign exchange, you are putting your own currency on a positive light that it can drop the value of the dollar. Mm. And this has, it may sound simple, but it's not. Let me tell you something that has also suffered during COVID. In, from the north, they were exporting charcoal. Charcoal. But because of COVID and the issues, they couldn't export charcoal anymore. Mm. They couldn't export charcoal. And this was any, we're exporting ginger. We're exporting honey refined from nigeria but courtesy of this and because government has um, not paid attention or supported some of these things we only support rice corn beans mm. we don't support others it seems as if they are not doing well they are doing well and that's the challenge we face as a nation until we do that and make our 
economy export dependent value of naira will not come down mm. it Doctor, you have painted a picture that I, c I could even call very gloomy i mean to how all of this, for instance, you mentioned three states, Plateau, Benue State, and Nasara yeah. State, where we have like liters of fruits here and there, and then we still do not even have a, fruit, a juice manufacturing yeah. company in, in, either, in either of these states. And you have also rightly stated that we should, at this point, be exporting more than we are importing. And we've seen this affect our economy largely. For instance, now we've seen a, a, deple a depletion in our external reserves in recent yes, times. Yes, yes. And... Uh, how then, or what are your thoughts on the depletion of the Nigeria's external reserve? And what can we do to, en to in increase our levels of export, especially at this time now where uh, we have seen, like you have, si like you have rightly stated, we used to export certain uh, commodities, but that has not been the case. And it also seems as though uh, more focus is spent, is, is put on certain uh, commodities like rice, beans, maize, and then some other ones are relegated really to the background. How do we move past this point that we are now? We must have the difficult conversations. We don't like to have difficult, just like between a husband and wife, they want to discuss their resources based on what they earn. They will sit down and tell themselves some things are a no, no right now we cannot afford it like i tell people that you can pay for something does not mean you can afford it mm. that you can afford it does not mean you need it that you need it does not mean it will necessarily meet your need let's do what we call financial audit of our major resources that bring money mm. some are completely related to the background can we pay attention to the oil has issues it will dry up someday Instead of us to look for sanitive resources, you are going to say there is oil exploration in northeast of Nigeria. How visible, how practicable is that? And monies have been voted for that. Number two, which has become um, a chorus answer. The cost of governance is too high mm. in Nigeria. You see a, a, a political office officer having convoys of car just to go for a naming ceremony. Convoys of car going for a, a housewarming. And these are taking its toll on the taxpayers money mm. you see a political officer having several aids that are being paid from the taxpayers money this can be channeled into useful ventures because what we do not understand the money may not be in box somewhere that you take but literally to put together you can imagine a governor traveling from like um plateau state to abuja and he cannot come by road he goes to hire a private jet and it happens are on taxpayers money because of insecurity or because of the of the emergency and there are governors in this country that have served that never took private jet in their eight years in service they never took they use public pu public airline mm. and they are governors and they didn't die and the records are there so why would our political office holders that were voted into office not leave the path and walk the path and live by example and i tell you for free if these political officers are begin to live by example they don't need to tell we to live by example because i'm seeing them you are seeing them everybody is seeing them living that part so the cost of governance is over bloated and over bloated in the sense that it becomes too attractive so that everybody wants to sit there in perpetuity somebody has been in national assembly since 1999 and that he has been earning on taxpayers money since 1999 he has been there as in fact he has stayed there enough to retire if he was in civil service that is not good for an economy that is developing and there are children that are out of school out of school children is more in the north mm. and we're not doing it as per education we're not doing it as per health nigeria had the capacity of producing vaccines as at 1986 we had the capacity in this country but today we are now looking for how to produce vaccine mm. That is a slap on our face if we say we are giants of Africa. These are the things that add up to making an economy grow. Mm. Not one man's effort or one, one stroke. Mm. It, that's not what grows an economy. So until we begin to look at all the critical sectors, come to just tourism should be fantastic. There are some people who are Europeans that are living in just in the last 40 years. Mm. They do not want to go back. We can make those things lucrative and people pay. Why do we need to travel to Dubai, for instance, mm. to go for vacation, when we can replicate all we have in each geopolitical zone or states and make money from it. Mm. When some things are working, people will pay for it. Mm. I give an example. The electricity, as much as we complain, 
that the tariffs are high. If there is light, you still pay for it now. Mm. You will pay. You will still pay. There's an agency of government I'm doing some work with in Abuja. They are supposed to generate 400 million every month from rates. But they have not been able to generate even half. But when we got in and started training their staff, they are beginning to see that they can generate this money legitimately mm -hmm. and contribute their own quota. That is the way it should, everybody must walk the talk. Let government be you know, be, be treated like private sector, demand per, per, per accountability, demand, you know, performance, and where there are laggards, you treat them as partner non grata. Mm. That is how it should be done. Because at the end of the day, you will come back, you will not be in the political office, and you will need to benefit from what you have done. And sit back. That's why you see a lot of, have you, haven't you seen professors in Nigerian university? They cannot send their own children to their own university. Mm. They go to private universities. And that's are professors that are being paid by the government. It's sad. Very sad. Indeed. Let's still talking on accountability like you have mentioned. Uh, recently we heard from the NNPC. Of course, there is the ongoing rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. And what the NNPC said in recent days was the fact that that refinery will be operational by 2022. And then there has been a lot of talks around that. Some people are saying, oh, that is possible. Some others say that is impossible. Well, I'd like to hear from you. How feasible is this considering, considering the fact that we have heard this over and over again? I remember sometime in 2019, there was the rehabilitation of a refinery and we had, we had been told that it was going to be sh um, operational sure. shortly. However, up until now, as we are speaking right here, that has not been the case. So how feasible is this? And do we expect anything different from the government moving forward? The truth is some of these things are just rhetorics in the, in the, in the media space. Mm. What is protocol refinery? Does, does it have the current technology to refine? What technology are they bringing to bear for current refinery? Isn't that what the rehabilitation is supposed Fantastic. to address? Fantastic. And monies have been voted. So do we exercise patients and watch <laughs> them spend the money? Then they will not come with another story. For me, those refineries should have been sold off. Mm. Completely. Mm. Sold off. But somebody, somebody mentioned that in his 2019 campaign that he wants to sell the refineries and they took a swipe on him. Is that not the same thing you are doing now? It's as simple. See, we have people with institutional memory in this country. Nigerians don't forget. We may not be in the public space, I mean, we may not be in the political space, but we know. And people want to hold you to your word. If we spend that much money in rehabilitating Port Harcourt Refinery, what is the guarantee that it will yield returns on the investment and we'll be able to refine? Refineries in uh, Port Harcourt, refineries in Kaduna, mm -hmm. refineries in Wari. These three refineries were our mainstay, and we were, we, were, we were going to the international space with the Committee of Nations as big boys. Mm. But here we are today with four major refineries that are as dead as anything. Meanwhile, a private refinery is coming up by an individual in a, in a barren land completely started from the scratch. A private, invest, a private owner. Mm. So if an individual can do that, it therefore means that there's something we're not doing correct as a government. That is totally indeed. So I, I, I get upset when governments say they are doing all their best. Your best is not good enough. It's not good enough. I've never worked for government before. I've never earned salary from government. And I don't hope to. Because it gives me the leeway to put government side by side and private sector side by side. And that's why you see that government is the largest spender in an economy. But the private sector is the highest player mm -hmm. in the economy. The private sector is the highest player, but the private sector will tell you that anything they are not able to do is because of there is an impediment of government policy or the politicians themselves or the civil servants themselves. And that's the challenge we have. Mm. And if we continue like that, we will still be in this. Look at our debt. Look at our, our debt profile for crying out so loud. 33.3 trillion mm. as a nation. What can we juxtapose that we have achieved between when it was in 2015, 2019 and today until we address this critical issue? I give an example. There's an MDA headed by a chief executive and the man for five years, he never went home with, with his official car. He drives his personal car to the office and used the official car. And when he's going home, he goes with his car. And when he was leaving, he dropped the key to that car. That's one. How many MDA chief executive can do that? He doesn't go out with convoy. Put this little, little, little together. You will save something and invest. What is the appraisal of interventions that have been done? Can we do the appraisal mm. and see? Some people took the COVID fund and went to buy car. And we see them on the road. Some of us wrote business plans for those people. And they never used it. 
and the government officials are seeing them. So what do you do? How do you now grow the economy that somebody took COVID fund to go and buy a car or build a house that that was not what he stated in his business plan? It's so sad. And at the end of the day, we will keep pointing, you know, accusing finger at the center. But this is 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 is, is an, it's an accumulation. It's a cumulative ripple effect. If that person is in a, a political position today, he will do worse or do same. Mm -hmm. And that's when we will tell ourselves, but we put you there to work. You can't work. Mm -hmm. He'll begin to tell stories. Because these things we are saying are not things that, of course, will yield results in the next 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 2 years. But if there's a solid foundation, if there's a solid foundation, and you can see the trajectory, you will believe, everybody believes in growth. When the refinery started in Ekbe, everybody saw the growth. Mm -hmm. And here it is today. Here it is today. In, in how many months from now, production will start. He knows the capacity. But look at the human resource and the investment that has gone. And consortium of 12 banks gave him 50% of that money because they believe he will work. Mm. That's the point. Mm. Ah, okay, Mr. Um, Dr. Hidengi, as we count down to the next um, MPC meeting, which I believe is supposed to start on Monday yeah. next week, what are your expectations? What are your projections? And do we, ex do we expect any changes, especially with the monetary policy rates? Thank you very much. What we should know is MPC meeting and the assumption that comes out of it does not happen in isolation. Mm. There's a trajectory. What's the performance? What's the MPC report? How do we do this? If we increase or we reduce, what do we expect? I can tell you they will maintain all the rates. Mm. Asymmetric corridors, the CRR, the minimum discount rate, they will maintain it. Why? Because that is the the most most safest thing to do right now is the safest thing to do right now because Did you say safest or cause of this uncertainty that we are seeing in the market yes it's the safest safest so that we just mm, we develop this skin if you reduce it what is the reason why you want to reduce it do we have any performance that shows we should reduce it and if you increase it do you want to increase the the, the pressure on the take home of Nigerians mm. because once you increase it it's just like when there is an announcement to reduce four pump price filling stations don't act immediately mm. but if there is an increase before you say jack <laughs> the price is up because they want to benefit maximally so that when they go to the market next they will be able to you know buy what they buy so the truth of the matter is I s I'm expecting them to maintain the, the, the assumptions mm. as it is because that is the safest thing to do right now but uh, again our our foreign reserve in three days depleted by 100 million US dollars mm. in three days that is huge and it was even the central bank that came out to tell us so the man in Wuse market what does he know is foreign reserve mm. inflation is on the steady increase misery index is high mm. we are at a stagflation right now where unemployment inflation and of course we're in planting season harvest week maybe start maybe September October mm. for some of those and with us in Nigeria, most things that go up in price do not come back again. Even after the festivities are over, do you expect a drop in the price of basic commodities at least? The basic commodities that may drop are those ones that will be harvested, for instance. Okay, if during this um, salad I just ended, somebody said they rammed the boss 75,000 last year, it's now 120, 130. So are you telling me that by next year, salad, that ram should remain at 150? It will remain. Because cost of taking care of those things is already high. People now keep those things in the comfort of where they can manage and provide, you know, um, their basic needs to them. So prices will go high, except for commodities that will be harvested, like um, the staple foods, rice, yam, beans. Of course, when there is harvest, there's so much supply facing just little demand so and you wouldn't want to go home with your product so you want to just sell off mm. and go and because you are and also we don't have fantastic storage recently the central bank released some grains to to people really because but how many of such interventions do we have and mm. to what extent our population growth is not equivocal with our economic growth mm. recently and UNFPA say we are 211 million and i think that figure is still wrong because the last sensor we did, I was not counted, even when I stayed at home for one week. And so also it's for a lot of people. So if we are growing at that rate, is our economy growing at that rate? That's what you should be asking yourself. Mm -hmm. 
if 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 people because you cannot go to people some and say don't give out to more than this don't give out to more than this you can't control that then i should be able to work with what i can control which is the economy the uh, mpc the fiscal policy the monetary policy the cost of doing business cost of governance um uh, um emolument of political office holders that wants to stay in perpetuity in office we can control that with the right legislation okay. and once we do that we'll now see headway Okay, in a minute, Doctor, I mean, there is an ongoing conversation around the CBN's digital currency, which we are told is going to be launched um, October 1 this year. What are your thoughts on that, considering that we have seen the CBN uh, restrict uh, f um, transactions, especially with uh, financial institutions, accepting crypto transactions? And now it seems as though they are becoming, uh, what do they call it now? They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are finally accepting digital currency. In a minute, what are your thoughts, Doctor? Um, CBN never was was never against cryptocurrency. Coming from the banking industry, I was part of the people that pushed for cryptocurrency in 2017. And what CBN clearly told us then was they want to go and do a research. I invested in cryptocurrency and I lost money in cryptocurrency in Nigeria. And the only thing I said then, which is what I will still say, is we have a denominator that can regulate cryptocurrency in Nigeria, which is our BVN. Mm. Now, if you are afraid of a capital flight, money is going out you have a denominator which is the bvn to regulate now no country will want another legal tender to contest with its legal mm. tender no country will do that and that was what cbn is saying and it took them this while to study and study it to the point that they have come to make a pronouncement it means they have understood it to a point but what people do not know is a digital currency may not necessarily be a legal tender it may be a payment gateway as it were it, it will because i would it, it may even improve the um, cashless and uh, improve um, uh, uh, financial inclusion but that it will replace the naira no mm. there is digital currency in that country but it has not replaced their primary currency so for cbn to come out because that's what we said we had uh, investors forum in jaws in abuja in lagos i was part of it and i knew and this was what we kept on saying so for me i was okay finally cbn has come to light because there are People in the financial sector, even those in central bank, that know the importance of the cryptocurrency. Now, there will be regulation. And Nigeria, or central bank, will issue its own cryptocurrency. You know, that is, that is, that is, that is, is autonomous to us, so that they can regulate. There is nowhere any currency is not regulated mm. in the world. It must be regulated. And if it's not regulated, all those things will come to play. And you cannot monitor when there's capital flight or there's illicit financial flow. Because I'm a forensic examiner, and we take serious issues that has to do with uh, illicit financial flow in and out of Nigeria. Mm. Okay, indeed, there is nowhere in the world where a currency is not regulated, and that is what the CBN intends to achieve yeah. with the digital uh, currency. And this is the point where we wrap up today's edition of the program Cosmopolitan Market, which is, of course, coming to you on the Nigeria Custom Broadcasting Network. And this is the final edition for the week, but we'll be back again with you on Monday by 11 a.m. as usual to keep you updated on happenings in the world of business. Thank you again, Doctor, for coming on the program. The pleasure is mine. Thank from, you so much. And from myself and the entire crew, bye for now and join us again, same time, same station, next week.